Hello everyone, Chris here. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to take a look at the EasyPap, another PEP device. Last session we looked at the flutter valve, the acapella, which is a PEP device and it has a vibratory feature, a, a vibration if you will, in the chest when the patient expires into the device. Today we're going to look at the EasyPap and we actually require flow to make the EasyPap work. We need an oxygen or an air source to, uh, to make the EasyPap work. The EasyPap comes in a disposable package. It has a mouthpiece. It has a effort manometer, if you will, that's a, a separate device that we go ahead and put on that small connector there. And then we have the larger connector that we connect to oxygen tubing. The oxygen tubing is in the packaging. So we just pull that out, connect that there, and the EasyPap is ready to go. Now, the other end of the oxygen tubing is connect to an oxygen or air source flow meter. I like to start at about five liters a minute. Um, that gives the uh, a good amount of flow into the easy pap and creates a, a, a decent amount of resistance for the patient to expire against. So let's go ahead and turn the flow on to the easy pap. I'm going to set that to about five liters right now, and you'll hear the sound. Typical sound that you'll hear with the easy pap. Now I'll go ahead and demonstrate how this might look as you're giving a patient the EasyPap treatment. Now we wanna have the patient breathe normally, not too fast. Normal rate is uh, preferred. They're going to feel that resistance and push against it and just have a nice breath in and blow out, not hyperventilating, just a normal um, normal pattern, but they will feel the resistance. Um, and of course, if you notice the uh, effort meter, um, I kept it in the green. So by having set about five liters, that seemed to, to maximize and kept me in the green zone where I'm maximizing the benefit of the easy path. So as with all of our procedures, we would follow our performance checklist. We would go ahead and um, check the patient's chart, uh, check the orders, look, review the chart for any important information um, that might be in there. Um, and of course, once we get to the room, we want to introduce ourselves to the patient in which department we come from. We obviously want to have all the equipment ready. We've gathered all of the equipment ready and we're ready to go. And then we want to observe uh, proper hand hygiene, any PPE that we might want to place on, depending on any isolation precautions. Uh, most people would recommend nowadays using gloves all the time for all patients. So we want to go ahead and do that and then instruct the patient on what the easy pap is about. I worked at a facility recently where post open heart patients all received easy pap treatments for the first two days with no medication. We would just give these treatments uh, QID four times a day and have them cough, big coughs during uh, and post the treatment with the EasyPap. Now the EasyPap can also be utilized with a small volume nebulizer so that you can be giving a patient medication through the small volume nebulizer at the same time providing them back pressure or the PEP therapy along with it. So let me go ahead and bring in a small volume nebulizer here, a, a regular nebulizer. This is a Hudson nebulizer. So I'm gonna relocate the mouthpiece here onto the, onto the small volume nebulizer and then take the easy pap and connect it there to the back of the T of the small volume nebulizer. So I'm still running the PEP device to the easy pap at five liters and then I would have my oxygen tubing running to the small volume nebulizer to another flow meter at normally what we use is about six liters, right? So you would need two gas sources uh, for this type of therapy. And then as the patient uh, breathes in and out, they're gonna be getting medication and as well as some back pressure to give them that PEP therapy. And with all of our uh, procedures, if we, re if we review our performance evaluation checklists, uh, first thing we want to do is we want to check the chart. We want to check the order, ensure that the, that the therapy has indeed been ordered. We want to review the chart for any important pertinent information that we need to know before we begin therapy. Um, we want to collect all of our, um, our equipment and get it all ready to go. Enter the room and introduce ourselves to the patient, um, which department we're from. 
Um, exercise, good hand hygiene, um, PPE, uh, gloves, any masks, depending on what type of isolation the patient might be in. And we want to go ahead and get that all ready to go and then instruct the patient thoroughly on the therapy that we're going to be delivering. In this case, we have the, the breathing treatment with whatever medication we'll be administering um, and or and the PEP device as well. Um, instruct them thoroughly on how to breathe normal and that they'll be breathing against some back pressure and that will help them uh, open and expand their lungs. And obviously it really helps with uh, deposition of the medication as well. Um, you get a really good treatment with this type of device. There's uh, two connections, a little bit cumbersome in terms of having two sets of tubes, one to the nebulizer and one to the PEP device, to the easy PEP. But again, beneficial and these work very, very well. Again, they can be used on their own as a standalone therapy just by placing the mouthpiece and using the PEP device or the easy PEP this way. Or you can incorporate a small volume nebulizer as well to uh, administer a bronchodilator uh, to the patient. So this is the easy PEP. Now we were re going back to our checklist. We want to go ahead and do a thorough assessment, listen to breath sounds, vital signs, heart rate, respirations, pulse oximetry. Uh, pre-therapy, then we want to follow our normal procedure for any small volume nebulizer treatment if that is what we're doing here uh, and do the same type of uh, pre-vital uh, sign documentation, um, monitor the patient throughout therapy, uh, encouraging um, proper use and coughing. Certainly after the treatment, we really want to encourage and get some big coughs there and then document all of the post-treatment vital signs, pulse oximetry, heart rate, respirations. Um, when we're giving medications, a good idea to use, utilize a peak flow meter. We can look and see what our pre-peak flow is, give a bronchodilator, measure our post-peak uh, flow, and document that in the record as well. So once our treatment is concluded, and we like to run these like a, like a, a, a nebulizer treatment, uh, between five and 10 minutes, depending on how well the patient will tolerate this. A normal breathing pattern, pushing against the resistance is, is all that's required. Um, once that's done and the patient's tolerated that, um, you want to always ask the patient if there's anything else that you can get them for comfort um, and do that before you exit the room. Make sure that they're safe, that there's no, that the rails are up, there's no um, safety issues like um, uh, tubing or anything that might interfere or wrap around the patient. And then once we're done with that, we can exit the room. We can document everything in the medical record. Um, and that way we complete the therapy so that other care team members can see how the therapy was tolerated and how the patient did with that therapy. So that is the easy PAP device with and without a small volume nebulizer.